what has stood out about what you've seen out of the Rockets? Well, I mean, they're really, really balanced on both ends of the floor. Um, certainly been well documenting, um, you know, how good they are offensively. But, uh, you know, their defense has, has really, I think, taken a big jump um, collectively as a group. Well, they don't want to take this for granted. So is Carmelo available tonight? Yes. Okay. And, and how are you going to start? Same way okay. with Carmelo in there. Okay. And um, Josh? Yes. Okay. Did you, do you think you got what you wanted out of resting him a day? And yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, for him, um, I think he feels good right now. Gave him a couple days. So, um, like I said, you know, it's more of a collaborative effort, you know, with myself and him and the medical staff talking about those things. And he's he's open to those things. Um, you know, obviously, I think coming out of the All-Star break, just the way our schedule is set up with two on the road, one home, three on the road, you know, and then having that back-to-back, -back, it just seemed like it made sense to do that. Billy, you do often say, like, when you're talking about resting a guy, it's a, it's a collaborative effort. Where does that conversation start? Did it start with the medical staff saying he needs rest? Did it start with Carmelo saying I could use a day at some point with, with you asking for information? No, you know, well, for, 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 for this situation, it started with me. You know, how are you feeling? Where are you at? Doing the thing back to back. And then you just kind of start the conversation with him. And then, like I said, you know, he was really, you know, whatever you guys think is best. And then, you know, you get with the medical staff. And, you know, Carmelo said, no, I feel good. I want to play. I mean, we would have, we would have played him. Um, and I'm not saying he didn't feel good, but. I think uh, you know coming down the stretch. I mean, he practices every single day. He's played pretty much in every game, other than you know a couple times in the ankle and the back. But outside of that, he's been there. So you don't want to be sensitive. I mean, he's 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 logged a lot of minutes in his career. He's he's played in a lot of games, and you know you want to make sure every game that you know as you're coming down the stretch that you know he's feeling good physically. I mean, that's really what you want to be able to do. And uh, so you just talk about it. I know, like like Doc Rivers, for example, obviously not the only coach that will like rest his veterans during practices and that kind of stuff as a way to be able to play through games is that something that's under consideration for him yeah i mean there's there's times where you always take into consideration with the medical staff going into practice tomorrow you know minutes you know what happened the night before where guys rep physically you know what you want to be able to do how much will a guy go through practice you know when i say melvin practices every day he's always been available every single day you know if there's any time that um, he doesn't practice a lot of times i'll tell him hey listen why don't you just you know, you can do these things, but then sit out of this stuff. So, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm relying a lot on the medical staff as it relates to, because it's not so much last night's game, it's more of cumulative effort, you know, of games and weeks that, that they evaluate. Hey, Billy, when, uh, when Houston made their off-season moves, a lot of people thought they'd be good, but they've been really good. As an outsider looking in, what do you think has elevated them from maybe, you know, being one of the better teams in the West to right now being the best team? Well, like I said, I think your defense is really good. I think no one gives them enough credit defensively. They've done a great job defensively. Um, you know, Chris Paul's always been a really, really good defensive player. <clears throat> you know, Emba Mute, Tucker, those guys are really good defenders. You know, Reese has always been there. Capella, um, you know, Harden's extremely smart um, defensively. He's really good at reading passing lanes. Um, he can guard a lot of different positions. So um, I think with what they've added, um, they, they've really been themselves defensively. As much as they switch defensively, is there a way that in general is best to go at a team that does that? And is there an approach that best suits your group? Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be a big part tonight is going to be, you know, recognizing those situations that will be important, you know, based on where switches are occurring and happening. Um, sometimes actually trying to manipulate some of those switches, you know, to get matchups that you would like. Um, but a lot of times randomly when the play is happening, it's not coming out of a timeout or it's not a dead ball situation. You know, our guys have an awareness of that. You know, there's times they'll switch one through five, sometimes one through four. Um, sometimes they just go you know, one through four, or sometimes they just switch on the perimeter. So they mix it up as well. A lot of teams, the Rockets being one, when they're switches, they go one on one a lot. Is that, does that work well for your group? And is there ever too much? Well, I think in certain situations it does. The spacing is correct. You know, I think any great player against a switch always needs space. So I think a lot of times when um, a switch does occur, um, how the floor is balanced with the other four, four players is critical. You know, because if the floor is just really loaded up on one side and, and, and they can funnel the ball into all the help, you know, it becomes very, very difficult. But, uh, you know, when you're switching, I think you want to make sure that you have the proper spacing. Uh, also, whether the ball is being you know, taken by a guard against the big on the perimeter or whether you're post-speeding, you know, because you could very 
easily have a mismatch in the post and your spacing's really, really bad and the ball goes into the post and then the post gets trapped. Now you're putting a big in a really difficult situation. So, you know, spacing and those kind of things, you know, you've got to make sure that guys are spaced correctly. And, and that's going to be a big challenge, I think, for us tonight is randomly recognizing those situations. Consistent for the reasons the Braves are really good in the Harden matchup. Has his voice been heard the last couple of days compared the other guys to guard hard? Well, I think for, for, for Andre to keep him engaged, you know, one of the things that we've tried to do, you know, game by game, and he hasn't had to take travel with us, but certainly on home games, you know, whether it be Corey or Terrence or Josh, is to have Corey involved in film sessions with those guys. So it's not necessarily so much in this game, it's keeping him involved every game. So he certainly has played a part in doing that. Because we want to keep him engaged because he's certainly limited what he can do physically right now. Um, you know, he's rehabbing and doing those things. But to keep him engaged with the team and with the group, we really felt that that was a way that he could take his experiences and, and maybe pass them along to some of the other guys.